so when we uh, discuss old is gold i will be uh, more uh, particular that it is more of what we have learned from the ancient times rather than just old so medicine over the last centuries maybe hundreds and thousands of centuries have developed and healthcare we have had various schools of medicine and in the prehistoric times when uh, men believed that illness and diseases were a punishment from the gods and the first physicians were witch doctors who treated illness with ceremonies and then later on we had e more of evidence in the management in, in uh, various uh, later on times and different tribes they commingled and exchange of tribal folklore ever increasing compendium of useful not so useful even dangerous remedies developed over the years and then we had the egyptian medicine a very old civilization where they had their own uh, beliefs and different uh, gods and demons and spirits and they attributed the diseases to these and ancient egypt more than 3 to 5 uh, 100 years bc was the dawn of the medical care which was greatly influenced by wealth and trade you also know that chinese medicine today is a vast uh, subject and there were various uh, dynasties and who were there developing these uh, ancient chinese herbs and medications also the greek uh, medicine uh, they knew various compounds like belladonna peppermint any seed but also believed in the supernatural ideas so while ancient civilizations were undoubtedly versed in the use of herbs as medicines extensive written records appeared only during the time of the greeks they documented their findings and we do have it today then the most popular science and the uh, uh, i would say not just science it's a way of life ayurved so dr narsing himself is i may say the pioneer of uh, uh, chrono medicine so he is really well versed into how a human cycle and our biological rhythm affects our health so here we have the traditional hindu uh, medical system which was native to this subcontinent and it consisted of diet herbal treatments and yoga also meditation also various other practices like hypnosis which we study very little about and these are ancient uh, which have been passed down the centuries we had uh, dhanvantri as the physician of the gods who emerged from the ocean of milk with amrit and herbs in the hand the nectar of life and then there are the various uh, literatures that we have the samhitas the chakras the sushitras the agniveshas and the ancient medical texts which unfortunately quite a few were destroyed when we had the great universities of ancient times nalanda and takshila which were destroyed and we lost quite a bit but then if we delve into it we will see that there was a huge mass of knowledge that was you know handed down from generation to generation see the oldest surviving complete medical system in the world it highlights the way of life and teaches how to maintain and protect health we have been discussing over medications and what not to be used so here we had a science and a way of living that imparted complete wellness to the human race even in our own clinical practice we do compare uh, whenever we treat our chronic illness patients we compare uh, the human race to the animals in the wild and we ask our patients those 
uh, animals are not on any medication. They were living on the same planet. Some of them are within a half a kilometer of where you are residing, I tell them. And your lifestyle and their lifestyle, their lifestyle have remained the same for centuries. And our lifestyle, I think, has had a drastic difference during our own lifetime. We've seen our uh, grandparents live to 80 years and 100 years, and we are seeing now children, young children coming with heart disease, metabolic disorders, everything. So this we know that how it evolved, the, uh, the ancient practice of uh, medicine and surgery. There have been various uh, subjects which have been taught over the years and Shushutra uh, have been uh, recognized uh, by uh, various uh, modalities of science all over the world. So, oh, we will not go too much in this. He was a surgeon par excellence, had written so much about various aspects of surgery. And the Shushutra Samhita contains 184 chapters and describes 1,220 illnesses, 700 medicinal plants, has a detailed study of anatomy, 64 preparations from uh, the mineral sources, and 57 preparations based in the animal sources. Charak, again, was another, uh, we all know, one of the principal contributions to the ancient art and science of Ayurveda. So a lot of divisions, all, everything in detail giving. This is just not in science. Even astronomy, if you go into, there have been so much written during uh, the ancient times. And uh, what we say that uh, it is the oldest, we do not know how old it is. The initial was just handed over by word of mouth. Then when we come to the we call it allopathy, we prefer calling it the rational system of medicine. So when we talk about the medicine in the 17th and the 18th century, we've had various scientists who did a lot of study on the cell, like Robert Cook, the microscope, surgery was discovered, pathology, obstin, gynae, scurvy, and anesthesia by the various uh, scientists uh, who have been there in the 17th and the 18th century. And the structure of the human body was almost fully known due to the new methods of microscopy and injections. In, even the body's microscopic structure was well understood. Then there were various uh, practices like the vaccine was discovered when Edward Jenner, who was a pupil of John Hunter, invented the world's first vaccine for smallpox in 1789. Jenner inoculating James Phillips with cowpox, a virus similar to smallpox, to create immunity to smallpox. This was a scratch that saved a million lives, and it was it led to the discovery of vaccines. Then, when we come to the 20th century, we have surgical and diagnostic techniques, which were developed to cure once fatal condition. The organ transplantation was started in 1954, and limbs started getting reattached. We had test tube babies in 1978. Amniocentesis was being done. And artificial hearts and cardiac transplantation and lung transplantation and renal transplantation were being done. So further progress in medicine, social sciences, technology, and economy led to increased life expectancy in wealthy populations and change in the morbidity and mortality patterns. 
then we when we come to the 21st century first draft of the human genome and is announced in 2000 and the finalized version is released 3 years later create a uh, embryonic stem cell and 2014 FDA approves the first human clinical trials in the United States for a variable artificial kidney. Then we have the future trends in medicine. We have nanomedicine and this again has its roots way back to the past and uh, we used to have uh, food being served in silver and copper utensils and the nanoparticles used to get absorbed. So the beneficial effects have been seen centuries back. Further uh, research in stem cells and then came the era of personalized medicine. So it is now more of a patient centric approach rather than a pharmacological centric approach. This is what we have learned over the years, how to treat and manage different conditions. Day by day, the technology is developing and old is getting replaced by the new. But can we simply forget the old methods that are still reliable and easy? Uh, Dr. Muruganathan spoke on empathy yesterday. So, Again, I must congratulate the organizers that we had such a wild array of topics being discussed. So empathy as a subject, he described so well in his talk. And that is what everybody should have. He also was uh, telling us about the MRCP examination, how the incidents, when you take a history, how you must go about it. So the newer generations have to be taught what is right. And traditional medicine, as we all know, is definitely is in the revival stage. We must imbibe the good from wherever possible we can get. And for thousands and thousands of years, People around the world have healed the sick with herbal and animal derived medicines, quite of which have been now, you know, purified and incorporated into modern medicines. This has happened especially in Africa and uh, Asia, where there was a lot of tribal and ancient medicine practices. The world is desperately seeking new drugs. We need to, uh, the truth is that modern medicine is short of treatments in a lot of areas. Say like, if we come to the major organs, renal failure for one. We have a lot of new drugs coming up, a lot of trials being done. But I, for one, warn my diabetic patients, please don't let your kidneys fail. The earliest sign of renal failure and there your downhill course will start. So preserve your kidneys. And how do we preserve them? Do we have any medicines who can, which can uh, reverse uh, renal failure? Hardly, very few of them. And that too when we start them in the initial phases. And it also takes years for a new drug uh, to get through the research and development pipeline and also a lot of expenses are involved. Apart from this, growing drug resistance is partly caused by misuse of medicines, which, the, uh, which was being discussed in the previous session, that do we need to over-prescribe medications? So when we are talking about PPIs and NSAIDs, I would add to it the 
antimicrobial stewardship where we have been we should prescribe antimicrobials where they are actually required also we are in the era of evidence based medicine we all practice that and there have been various milestones right from 900 ad uh, to present times when uh, uh, evidence based medicine was being practiced so it is basically clinical judgment versus relevant scientific evidence and the patient's values and preferences all combined together so it integrates best research evidence with clinical expertise and patient values we've had various examples whistle mouse bloodletting and and then we have various old therapies that are still being used very well today like leeches are being used and penicillin sulfa drugs aspirin nitroglycerin first used in 1867 insulin we know has completed 100 years and is a life saving medication same with morphine and digitalis so with advancing medicine and also poor health do we need to reintrospect ourselves thank you very much